Hey, my name is Matthias Ringel and today you're going to be learning chord melody. If you have any question, please leave it down as a comment and click on the link in the description to get the tab. Let's get down to it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to play this at a slower speed for you. Great, so uh, the idea of this is basically to come up with chord from a melody. So what we're doing here, uh, I mean, we are trying to create some type of like chord melody in which we're playing, uh, in which we're playing a melody and at the same time we're playing chords. That, that, that's basically what we're doing here. So it's like, you know, we have this melody. Right, and it's really cool, and, and we could have these chords uh, uh, over the, those melodies that goes like... But now the question is, how do we combine this with chords? You know, how do we combine the melody and with the chord at the same time? So you don't have, you don't need to like... You don't need like a piano player or you don't need uh, anybody else. It's just you playing the guitars, playing the guitar, playing the chords and the melody together. So you, you don't need a singer, you don't need a bass player, no, nobody. You just do it alone. So you can just go like outside on the street, you could go to play a show and you just have the show uh, and you just play the show entirely on your own, you know, because you are able to play the chords and the melody. Because if you were to play the melody alone, it, it would be probably boring. Or if you were to play the chords alone, it would be also boring. So so the first thing that we have, it's, uh, it's a D minor 7. And there are many D minor 7s. You know, you could play this one. We're obviously going to choose our choice of chord is going to be the ones that are closer to the melody. So to me, this D minor 7 is the closest to the first note that I'm going I'm to go. Uh, this is the first part. So we're gonna we're gonna work with these three notes. So for the first note, I'm gonna go with this one. For this chord, I'm playing the index finger on the fifth fret all across, and then I'm playing the ring finger on the seventh fret and the middle finger on the sixth fret of the second string, just like that. See? And then, of course, the index finger is uh, it's playing the fifth fret of the third string. And then I go into an inversion of that because um, I know that this note is the... So I'm still in D when I play this note, see? So I know that this one in D is the fourth. It's the fourth or the eleventh of D. Of D. So... What I'm going to do is, I mean, to me, the easiest thing to do is usually to go to the next inversion, right? I mean, I could also just do this, right? I could just want keep that chord right there and play this note. But I want to make it a little more interesting, so I'm going to change inversion. So I'm going to go to this inversion, right? And I could change it to here. But instead... I'm going to make it in, I'm going to give it a little bit more flavor and I'm going to remove the seven and I'm going to make it a triad with a, with an 11. So see, so what I've done here is I've taken from this inversion, this is the first inversion of a D minor seven. This is the root position and this is the first inversion. And from this one, I have taken, I have taken the, of course, the, the top melody because it doesn't belong to the melody that we're trying to play and I'm going to put it here so that's the first step and have and then the next step is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to bring it here which this is the seventh of a D and I'm going to bring it to the fifth which is going to make it a triad so it's going to give it a little bit of a different taste for a little bit see kind of cool 
Then I'm gonna go with this one. I have the G7, and uh, this is very easy. I'm, I mean, we all know the, G, the this G7, right? We've played it. So, so the most easy uh, solution here is to just play the six. See? And it sounds great. So great. So then we go into this part. And for these parts, we have uh, the D, uh, a C major 7. Dun, dun, dun. So, and then the F major 7. And so for this one, I'm just going to go with the normal C major 7. If you don't know it, um, you're going to go place the index finger on the 3rd fret of the 5th string, then the ring finger on the 5th fret of the fourth string, then the middle finger is on the fourth fret of the third string, and the pinky finger is on the fifth fret of the second string. And then I just move that pinky finger up. And I go to this normal, everybody knows this, F major 7, if you don't know it, you you have to play with your index the, the first uh, fret of the sixth string. Then with that same finger, you kind of mute the fifth string. It's very important that you mute it, because it's, it's not going to sound good as well. It sounds, I mean, it's too close. The voices are too close here, and it's too low, so it's not going to work very well. So, index finger on the first fret of the sixth string, then middle finger on the second fret of the fourth string, ring finger on the second fret of the third string and pinky finger on the third fret of the second string so and then we're going to uh, b minor 7 flat 5 it's actually pretty simple to play this chord the structure of this chord is so easy because your chords are alternating between second and third fret so you go second fret third thread second fret third thread you know so it so it looks like if you start on the fifth fret on the fifth string and you move down and you move up to the fourth, third, and second string, you will go second fret, third fret, second fret, third fret. Very easy. This is the B minor seven flat five. And uh, you know, once again, you you also alternate your fingers, so that's even more easy. So you go uh, index, ring, middle, pinky. pinky. So for this one, we just play, right? So I'm going to do, this is going to be without any chords. Sometimes it's fine to not have a chord, you know, right? I, just to give it, a little, just to make it different for a little bit. So you go, and then here, I'm going to play a D diminished chord, D diminished seven. You could see this, I mean, the way I thought of this was not as a diminished seven. But actually, I thought of it as an inversion of uh, E7, which, which kind of is, you know. Because, because the original progression has this... Dun, 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 right? So, if, if I want to play an E7, right? And I go into the seventh, flat seven of the chord, that's the third inversion, I could do this. Right? But my melody is requiring this. So what I do is I just do this inversion and I go... Which is what basically is giving me... I am replacing the root of the chord, which is this one, which is the E, with the B, with the flat 9. That's all I'm doing. So it's still a D7. It's still a, an E7, I mean... And then I go, so if you don't know how to play this one, it's very easy. It's a fifth fret of the fifth string, and you're going to play with your middle finger. Then you're going to go with your ring finger into the uh, sixth fret of the fourth string. Then with your index finger, you're going to go into the fourth fret of the third string, and pinky finger on the sixth fret of the second string. And then we go into the famous Jimi Hendrix chord, the E7 sharp 9. You've all learned that one. If you don't know this chord, it's a seventh fret, middle finger, fifth string, sixth fret, index finger, fourth string, 
7th fret, ring finger, 3rd string, and then 8th fret, pinky finger, 2nd string. And we finish. This is just a variation of an A minor 7. It's an A. It's an A minor 6. So how do you come to this one? You have this. If you literally put your finger all across, your index finger all across the 5th fret, you're going to get an A minor 7 without playing the 5th. The 5th is muted there. So what happens if you lower this, the 4th string to the 4th fret? That's what happens. That's what we're playing right there. So all together. For this chord, the first one, there are many ways of playing it. I like to play it like this, with three fingers, but you can play with four fingers. So the way I play it is I put my middle finger on the eighth fret of the fifth string, and then I put my index finger on the seventh fret of, this, of the fourth string and third string. So that's with two notes right there, see, with two strings. And then I go on the ring, on the ring finger on the eighth fret of the second string. But you can also play that in a different way, if it's easier for you, you can go with the ring finger on the 8th fret of the 5th string, and then you place your index finger on the 7th fret of the 4th string, and your middle finger on the 7th fret of the 3rd string, and pinky finger on the 8th fret of the 2nd string. And that's it. That's another way of playing it, if it's easier for you. I prefer this one. important that you are very subtle with these fingers. You don't want to be playing this at, you know, like, you want to be very, very subtle and like listen to the dynamic of your fingers. You know, right there, for example, I was, I was very, very harsh. Uh, so you got to be very, very careful. That's going to give you a good, good sound with it. And that's it. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and that you're able to play melodies on top of chords. So now you're no longer restricted to playing chords or either a melody. Now you can play the chord and the melody together. I would love to know what you think about this lesson. So please leave it down as a comment below. Also, remember to click on the link in the description or the annotation to get the tab. I would also love to know what you would like me to teach you next, so let me know in the comment section what you would like my next lesson to be. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Guitar Control, YouTube channel for daily guitar lessons. Thank you so much for watching.